production and distribution of City Club forums on IdeaStream Public Media are made possible by PNC and the United Black Fund of Greater Cleveland Incorporated. Hello, and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland, where we are devoted to creating conversations of consequence that help democracy thrive. It's Friday, September 13th, and I am Nigaman Sridhar. I serve as Senior Vice President and Provost of Cleveland State University. I also have the privilege of serving on the member, as a member of the Board of Directors of the City Club of Cleveland, and I'm proud and privileged to serve as a member of the Cleveland Board of Education that oversees the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. CMSD is Ohio's third largest public school system, serving more than 36,000 students. It's home to state champion athletic and robotic programs, the nation's fourth Say Yes to Education district, and several innovative community partnerships in both the public and private sectors. At the same time, the district is also staring down a $110 million budget shortfall by 2027, in part driven due to the loss of COVID-era funds and, and increasing expenses. This November, Cleveland voters will decide on a proposed school levy that would raise $52 million for CMSD schools annually. CMSD is also asking for a 35-year extension on an existing bond issue. For district leadership, the stakes are high in an era where family budgets are tight and rising property values complicate the issue. Today, we will hear directly from CMSD and area leadership to understand both the levy and the bond issue better and learn exactly how plan each, each plans to invest in Cleveland students and future. On stage with us is Shakori Davis, president of Next Generation Construction, Sara Elakard, executive director of Minds Matter Cleveland and chair of the Cleveland Board of Education, and Dr. Warren G. Morgan, CEO of the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Moderating the conversation today is Katie Usin, anchor at News 5 Cleveland. If you have a question for our panelists, you can text it to 330-541-5794. That's 330-541-5794, and City Club staff will try to work it into the second half of the program. Members and friends of the City Club of Cleveland, please join me in welcoming Dr. Warren Morgan, Sarah Elicard, and Shakori Davis. Katie. All right, good afternoon. Thank you so much for the introductions and setting the scene for us today about what we will be discussing, such an important topic. Um, but first, if you don't mind, really quick, we want to talk about a little bit of news of the day that came out today. The report cards. So, Dr. Warren, let's talk with you. Shift it to you really quick. Talk to us about the encouraging news we heard today regarding CMSD and the report card. Uh, yes, thank you so much. I'm so excited to announce to our community, and many of you have probably heard, uh, that CMSD, for the first time in history, is meeting state standards and is a three-star district. So let's give the community a round of applause. It truly takes a village and uh, you know we'll be sharing more about the progress and other updates and about the community uh, efforts at the state of the school coming up on October 1st. Um, but I also see that we have scholars in the house and I want you to put another round of applause because it was their performance, their work that delivered this. as well as our educators and leaders, so thank you. Yeah, certainly a nice bright spot to start the day off today. All right, let's get back. Well, first, before we, that kind of is the nice segue right into Shikari, if you don't mind. Shikari, I want to talk about um, you for a moment because you are a CMSD alum um, and founder now, president of Next Generation Construction, a $30 million enterprise based in Cleveland and one of the largest minority-owned businesses here in Northeast Ohio, and I know you have 
said how important your public school education and CMSD was to you. Yes, uh, so not only myself, I gotta boast a little bit, uh, <laughs> but I uh, have two uh, CMSD grads, uh, both who have biology degrees, um, and uh, one is going to med school and the other one actually works for the clinic and continuing education at um, Xavier. Um, my wife is a CMSD grad, my mom is a CMSD grad, and I employ uh, CMSD students, so uh, I'm invested in the process. So. Okay, so let's get now to the Cleveland Schools Tax Levy, issue 49 on your ballot. Uh, Dr. Morgan, Sara, talk to us about uh, what measures have been taken by CMSD to address the budget shortfall before turning to this levy? Yeah. So first I wanna underscore what Dr. Morgan shared and how important the community has been to this success. So this has been a long-term effort of getting to this place of meeting state standards, having that three stars. There's no silver bullet in education and the young people in this room who have worked really hard to do well, to achieve, to learn, are a key part of that. But also our educators, our leaders, our partners, our nonprofit partners, our, um, our voters, right? The people who have voted to resource this school district time and again are the reason that we're able to talk about that success today. Um, talking about the budget, the board has been really careful over you know, the last several years, I've served, off, served on this board for five and a half years, and every year, twice a year, we're looking at the budget, we're looking at how we can deliver what our students and our educators need to be successful, while also being really responsible with the public dollars that we're tasked with stewarding. And so we've um, looked at making cuts, we've made $80 million in cuts over the last year of planning, and we want to continue the momentum that we have, and we're coming to the community with the ask for a single issue, issue 49, um, that will be on the ballot this year. And Dr. Morgan can't say it, but I hope that folks will support it. Uh, there will be two uh, matters on the issue. One, an operating levy. That's going to be how we fund our programs, how we make sure that our students continue to achieve in academics, in math, science, reading, writing, um, and then the uh, the bond issue, which is an extension of the bond that we already have, and that is really critical to ensuring that we have the facilities that we need so our students are in safe, adequate buildings, the kind of buildings that foster the ability to learn, and buildings that are the right size for our student population. The, the only thing I would uh, add to that uh, piece is when we were looking at our budget, and as you guys know, as a district, we have to submit a five-year forecast twice in the year, once in November, once in May. And last November, when we submitted our five-year forecast, we showed uh, deficits that were coming up, actually starting this school year. So all the cuts that you heard about last year, we knew that if we didn't make cuts last year at the central office, uh, we were at risk of being taken over by the state. And so we made those cuts. Uh, we made cuts at central office at the last year, state of the schools, I made a commitment that our central office will be cut by 10 percentage points. Uh, by, by, 10, uh, by 10 percent, we exceeded that by 12.6 percent. But we do know, as Dr. Sridhar showed, even with the work that we've done, by 2027, we're showing a, a budget deficit or budget shortfall at the end of the school year of $110 million. This levy uh, would raise $52 million a year over 10 years. That alone also still will not solve all of the district's financial issues. So there's work that we're doing. Uh, we're not only asking the community to help us with our, our budget shortfall. There's work that we're doing when it comes to looking at our programs, when it comes to looking at our building footprint, when it comes to looking at school optimization. So this is definitely a collective effort. Um, and I know I see one of our, our scholars' <laughs> hands, and there will be, uh, there will be uh, time for questions. So I want to make sure we can get, get your questions. So, yes, yeah, there so will. So. In the second half hour, we will get so. to, to questions. So. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. No, I was going to say, uh, from a business per, uh, perspective, uh, Cleveland Metro uh, School District definitely plays a uh, central role in shaping the future leaders and also the future workforce of Northeast Ohio and our communities in particular. Uh, and more and more, as we continue to travel around 
the country, we're starting to see that uh, the quality of the education system really impacts the local development uh, in, in our communities nowadays, um, and also the prosperity as well. So um, we believe in uh, investing in uh, CMSD. Uh, we're as Dr. Morgan just said, we're starting to see the fruits of our labor, and we realize that uh, an investment in the kids is an investment in uh, families. It's, in, it's an investment in consumers, the economy. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, we need talent here in Northeast Ohio, not just today, but we'll need it uh, 10 years from now. So we're kind of looking at it as a long-term uh, strategy, a long-term investment uh, from the businesses and the community. I want to dig into that more with you <laughs> in just a moment, Shakori. But first, can we go back to the levy for a moment? And uh, many Cuyahoga County residents saw their property tax valuations rise significantly in our current appraisal period. So how do you overcome then the burden of asking these residents for more funds in that same year? Yeah, thank you for that question. It's probably one of the biggest questions we get around how do the property valuations actually impact the levy? And it doesn't um, because we actually went out for the levy before the reappraised uh, tax went out. Uh, so this levy is based on old tax rates and not on the new uh, uh, amounts. And so that is one of the biggest things we also want to make sure we share. And we, we share that with people. Um, we do understand that it is, um, it, it's tough times for everyone. Yeah, this is, this is a hard time and it's, it is a commitment when people are asking, when we're asking, hey, what does that investment look like? Um, but to the point when we're saying, for the first time our district and our scholars are meeting state standards because of the collective work and the commitment we've done, there's no better time now than ever to continue that investment in the progress of our, of our students, while the district also makes, continues to make tough decisions. We're not just asking the community to bear this on its own. The district is making tough decisions. We've made tough decisions this past year and we will continue to make those tough decisions while keeping our scholars in mind and the progress that we want to make in mind. A lot of times, Dr. Morgan, too, people wonder, if this doesn't pass, then what? What are the tough decisions then that your district faces? Yeah, there are already tough decisions ahead of us. As I mentioned, uh, the amount that we're asking for doesn't nearly cover all of the expenses over time. Uh, and all it does, if it does not pass, is uh, it, pushes a lot of those tough decisions up even closer. Um, you know, some of the amounts looking to the tune of, you know, 700 or so a staff at the school level, teachers, uh, and those are things we don't want to do. Last year when we made uh, cuts, we made them at the central office level and we said, you know, we want to protect schools as much as possible, keeping the school-based budgeting flat. And that was an intentional choice because our district strategy is embedded in the instructional core. So when you think about the progress that we made, everything is really focused on the instruction that happens in the classroom, the support we give to teachers and programs that we can give to students. And if we have to make those cuts at the classroom, it doesn't sustain the progress that we're looking to make over time. I know something I hear a lot too, voters will say, the schools already get enough money, they're okay. How do you respond to that? You know, it will be interesting if you ask any educator who is asked to do so much with so little in, in the resources. Uh, you know, even when we think about how we're funded at, uh, you know, the state level, uh, there, there's more that can even be done in terms of the resources that we bring in. Uh, some, often ask, some people often ask, like, why does it cost so much sometimes to educate? a student in Cleveland versus some other uh, districts or private schools. And when we think about our district being majority uh, students in social economic status of poverty, uh, majority of our students, if not all students, uh, qualifying for free and reduced lunch, uh, the numbers of students that are uh, in special education, and then also the number of students that are English language learners, the bar is still the same. We want all kids to achieve and have the high quality education they need and deserve but the resources it takes to ensure that they get there on time and on track. It takes resources, it takes support. Uh, and you know, any educator, any teacher in the classroom, school leader will tell you the challenges uh, that they face every day. And you see that they're doing it, they're overcoming those challenges and our scholars are, are succeeding. I wanna add on to that, you know, not just that we ask a lot of teachers, but we ask a lot of schools, right? Look at the last few years with COVID and how much CMSD took on to support our families and our students alongside our partners, right? The schools are the place where we build the future and here in Cleveland being, you know, just came out, we're the second poorest city in the country. 
we need resources to do that. There are lots of things that families are facing and we do look to schools to support them through all that. And so resourcing those schools is incredibly important. Sarah, I wanna stay on you for just a moment. You mentioned it very briefly in your earlier remarks, but I just wanna clarify so everyone's clear on it. The levy and the bond issue. The bond issue is a renewal. It is not a, t a new tax. If you really could, just succinctly, what, how are they different? What do they cover? Mm -hmm. Sure, so on a general level, the bond covers facilities, things related to facilities. So thinking about making sure that we can continue to have the facilities that our student needs, up, students need, update our buildings, right size our footprint. It's incredibly important that as districts think about the size of schools, that we are thinking about the way that those schools um, the, the way that they're resourced in terms of teachers, the right number of teachers for student capacity, and um, the operating, the bond will allow us to do that. The operating levy is about programs. So it's about what kind of academic resources we can provide in the building, how we're equipping teachers to do well when it comes to their day-to-day -day jobs. Everything that you expect of a school to be doing, those are the things that are funded by a levy. And those special programs that we hold so dear in Cleveland, right? Like our, our Say Yes partnerships, our additional out of school time help, those things are also funded by operating dollars. And would you like to explain why these two are combined on the ballot? They're combined because we need them. Bottom line, we need them both in order to continue the momentum that we've got. And you know what Dr. Morgan was saying earlier, we absolutely cannot go back if we have to make more cuts, it's going to be incredibly detrimental to our students and to the future of our city. All right, let's talk a little bit more about, Shukri, what you were getting into about the why, about really selling and making the case as to why this is so critical. Um, a little bit more about exactly how the money will be used and then what that does for not only the district, but our city. Oh, yes, um, I can echo that. Uh, we need it. Um, we're starting to see traction, uh, not only in the community, but as you can see, uh, by metrics and report cards that are in place. Um, but uh, as a business leader, I'm seeing firsthand how the business community and CMSD are starting to strengthen that, strength, strengthening that connection, uh, and it's starting to resonate a little bit more. Uh, just uh, a, a few examples of how uh, the business community is starting to gain access to uh, the CMSD pool is through uh, the architecture. It, I, I'm selfish, so I'll talk about yeah. construction. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, through the ACE program, uh, which is really gaining a lot of traction, and it's a national program that we're connected to here in Northeast Ohio. Um, you also have uh, Next Generation Construction in particular, we have a, a, a partnership with YOU where we bring on five or six interns uh, from CMSD every year to teach them the soft skill of construction. So that's estimating, project management, um, um, blueprint reading, uh, and teach them that there's two sides to uh, the construction industry, not only the professional side, but also um, uh, the, the, the guys in, who go out there and build, build the building. So uh, we're seeing that traction and also, uh, you know, with the Construction Employee Association and partnering with uh, Dr. Richards or Dean Richards over at Cleveland State University. Uh, so a lot of contractors have gotten together and we financed the program uh, with uh, partnering with uh, Cleveland State University, making them a, a four-year institution for construction management. So that's not to cannibalize the Kent State program, but to uh, kind of complement that. So we're excited about the traction we're, we're making and. Uh, we don't want to lose it, so we support this levy uh, wholeheartedly. I was going to say, I, we report so much on talking about filling that pipeline. We have so many open jobs, and we want to prepare our kids who are here so they can fill those jobs, good-paying jobs, jobs that have benefits, health care, they can raise a family on, buy a home here, and stay and thrive in Cleveland. What kind of progress, you were just kind of laying it out, though, have you seen over the past five, six, maybe even more recent years? Oh, wow. Um, so once again, I guess just selfish about uh, my company. Uh, so we're a construction company, but uh, um, our company, uh, we, 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 build, we build hospitals. So Next Generation Construction in particular, we were the first um, 
construction company, period, to uh, do a double RM, uh, I'm sorry, a double MRI replacement for Cleveland Clinic. Uh, it was a CMSD student who estimated that, who oh. actually uh, did the pre-construction on that. Uh, Sharon Williams building downtown. Um, we're doing the core construction in that building. It's a CMSD student who is actually the project engineer on that project. Uh, COVID came out uh, with University Hospital gave us their program, right? It's a CMSD student uh, who actually implemented that, 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 uh, that program. So it's a lot of things happening behind the scenes that doesn't necessarily get reported. Uh, but I am extremely intentional uh, about making sure that CMSD plays a strong role in the, role in the construction industry. And hopefully, uh, it's, it's, it sucks that a levy has to, you know, uh, highlight a lot of the good traction that's happened behind the scene. But uh, it's a lot happening. And once again, uh, we don't want that traction to stop. Just selfishly, I'll tell a story, too, about that kind of, I did a story with a young man, a Cleveland High School student, and he was really excited about the quantum computer that is here in Cleveland. And because of his gusto and his knowledge and his power, he was able to snag the first internship. He actually, they modeled the internship program around him because of him. He is now off doing great things, um, but that is inspiring to see. We have so many great minds that are just waiting to explode and open up here. Um, talking about Shakori being selfish, uh, <laughs> he, I want to share, if it's OK, something that you shared with me earlier while we were kind of waiting to, to step out here about progress, right? So just in your own family, you talked about, obviously, you've been incredibly successful, someone for our students to look up to. But you shared about you, know, you and your wife got trade certifications, right? And then your kids, we just heard about, went to college, got biology, biology degrees. One of them went to med school. Incredible success. Exactly what a parent always wants for their kids is that they have more opportunities than they themselves did, right? And we know that there are lots of different ways to be successful, but it's important for our students to have more opportunities of different ways they can be successful because they have that educational foundation and those partnerships and those programs that we can put in front of them so that there is more for the next generation, right? Like, that's why we're all here, to do better for the next generation. All pun intended, right? That's the, why the name of my company is Next Generation Construction. Hey. I missed the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Sarah, uh, Corey kind of talked about the private sector investment and will to really see our school districts, uh, you know, thrive. What about the nonprofit mm -hmm. um, segment? I know you have great expertise. Yeah, there. yeah. So, obviously, I work for a college success nonprofit. Fun fact, the school board is not a job. Um, it's a volunteer <laughs> role. But um, shout out to my fellow board members who are here today. Um, the, we've got incredible investment across our nonprofit community. The ecosystem here in Cleveland is really special where we've got so many partners who have banded together to support our kids uh, in so many different ways, right? Whether it's in school, out of school, any other time that you can name, um, we've got people who are doing incredible work to make sure that our students are successful, not just you know in reading, writing, arithmetic, but in building outside skills, social skills, getting access to exposure to college, and everything else that they need to be successful. So really, you know, I think that Cleveland is really unique and special in that we've got these incredible public-private partnerships, whether it's with business or um, our nonprofit partners. We're really fortunate to have that, and um, we want to continue have, being able to fund and, and support those partnerships. Going back to what you said, it, is, it takes a village, and certainly CMSD is like a city within yeah. a city. Uh, Dr. Morgan, talk to us, too, about um, the teachers, the parents, the families, yeah. um, getting them on board and invested in feeling like they are part of this as well. Yeah, you know, we have such an engaged community. That's one of the things I love about Cleveland. And, you know, we see our scholars that are out here. We have uh, one of the largest student advisory councils um, definitely within the state, maybe within the country, where our student voice is really uh, enacting. Um, they are a group that pushes us and helps us think about 
um, not only policy, but the, the needs that are, are top of mind for them. And I'm not only seeing that at the district level, but I'm also seeing the advocacy happening within their buildings. And you know, going back to the point of all the progress that is happening and sometimes needing waiting for a levy or waiting for you know, uh, you know, big news to come out. There's great things that are happening every day, and we want to make sure that we're continuing to highlight those stories of our students, of our parent ambassadors. We have parent ambassadors, over 100 uh, parent ambassadors that are connected to schools who are supporting our work. Um, they're, they're the reason why we're getting ready to do our Step Up for Kids uh, rally, where we're going to be uh, canvassing on Saturday, September 21st. Um, and that, that idea came from a parent last year. I was doing a listen and learn tour from the parents and the parents said, we need to be out in the streets getting kids back into school, advocating for attendance. So this misconception that students aren't engaged or that students aren't learning or that the system is failing or that parents aren't engaged, let's debunk that myth right now because our scholars are brilliant, our scholars are showing progress, our parents are engaged and we're pushing the work forward. Now, have we arrived? No. Even with this great progress that we have celebrating today, there's, there are other milestones. There's other work we have to do to continue this progress. But it's been this community that has invested in us over time that allowed us to get to this point. And we just need to continue that trajectory and also celebrating the brilliance of our community. And the work that we could do collectively is when we hear people say negative things about our scholars or about our parents or about our community, we need to be telling the positive news. We need to be sharing the stories and lifting up those stories of kids. You know, I think about Your Minds Matter students, and we have several students attending Ivy Leagues right now in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, I think of Chardon Black, who is now at Princeton, and so many other scholars. Our college application rate, went, percentage rate, went up eight percentage points last year. And we're in talks now about how we can have seamless enrollment with, you know, some of our local colleges so that all kids can think about getting into college once they graduate from high school. This is the work we need to be doing collectively, and it's showing the brilliance of our community, and it's due to the investment, the partnerships, uh, the resources that have come in that allows us to do this. Looking forward to the state of the schools coming up <laughs> yeah. on October 1st to hear a lot more. I know I have so many questions too, so which will be held for that day because, to, I'm sorry, Shakori, did you have something you wanted to add on that? Oh, no, I was gonna, I was gonna boast again. So if you go past the <laughs> laboratory, laboratory Case Western project uh, that I'm in a joint venture with Turner Construction, my project manager from there, uh, that project, he's the East Tech grad. Uh, his name is James Jackson. So uh, once again, uh, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, we can always do better, right? We can't, um, um, but uh, kudos need to be in place when you start to see progress. Uh, but just speaking a little bit more to the, uh, uh, so of course, a Greater Clean Partnership is one of the largest chambers in the country, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to sit on the board. And uh, if anybody, if you ever want me on a board, make sure you know I'm gonna be nosy. Uh, so one of, the, one of the things I did was kind of look at um, how we've supported uh, CMSD over the years, going back from 2012, 2014, 2016 with the renewal, even in 2020 with the 5% increase. Uh, and now, right, we're starting to see the traction. We need to keep the momentum going and uh, trust in the process. I think the mayor put a great leader in place, uh, and I think we have a, a very strong board. So. Um, it's painful now, but um, I think we'll st really start seeing that progress in the next, uh, next few years. Okay, we have like two minutes before we're <laughs> going to turn it over to the Q&A. Is there anything I ask you three, our panelists, that I didn't ask you or any point we didn't touch on in regard to the tax levy and the bond issue that you would like to, to button up? You know, one of the things I'll, I'll just underscore in terms of need, um, it is really important for the resources now, and we're only going to the community because it's an absolute need. I tell people all the time, you know, no one steps into a, a role as a new CEO and says, hey, one, we want to make budget cuts. Two, we need to negotiate all of our uh, contracts in the first year, union contracts. And three, we want to go out to the community and ask for money. Like, those are not things you sign up and say, that's, that's what you want to do in the first, uh, you know, couple of years of, your, uh, of being a CEO. So we're only doing this because we absolutely need to. And we believe it's the right thing we need to do for our scholars. And we're seeing the progress. So we're working hard on our, on our side. We're making the tough decisions. You saw all the work we did last year and the progress that happened from last year. So continue to think about this investment because we're doing the hard work on our side to provide the education for our kids. And I know our community has come alongside and partnered with us in the, in the past and we're just uh, you know, continuing to ask for that. 
Yeah, I would say on behalf of the Board of Education, we take it very seriously when we have to come to the community to ask for a vote on a levy. Like this is not a light topic. Um, you know, we looked at the dollars over many years. If you go back several years back looking at school board meetings, you'll say you'll see that we're talking about, you know, we may have to ask for a levy. What can we do as we're planning now? Um, and then we even thought about the timing of it in this election versus next year, whereas next year it would have been those new property evaluations that we know have gone up. And so this was the year so that it wouldn't be quite as painful, right? We're looking at $3.73 a week for the median, median home owner, and um, we're looking to support our students. And we know that you know, it, it certainly feels like times have been tough, right? But do we want times to be tough for our children in the future? Or can we do what we need to do now, including cuts, including the board continuing to take a careful look at the budget? You know, when we think about it, everything's on the table as we think about what do we need to change? But we also need this new dollar, this new funding. Life is a competition. Uh, see it every single day. We need to make the investments in our uh, economy and uh, I think this is a great step forward. So, was that a plate or the bell? Because no matter which way, it was perfect timing. Is that a yes? <laughs> you came in just under the plate or the bell, Shakori. So that was perfect. Thank you. So yes, it is about 12:30. So we are about to begin the audience Q&A, and for our live stream and radio audience. Or those just joining us, again, I'm Katie Eusen, anchor and reporter at News 5 Cleveland. Glad to be here to moderate today's forum at the City Club of Cleveland. Um, we are talking about the CMSD school levy that will be on Cleveland's November ballot. So joining us again is Shakori Davis, president of Next Generation Construction, Sara Ellicott, executive director of Minds Matter Cleveland and chair of the CMSD Board of Education, and of course, Dr. Warren G. Morgan, CEO of Cleveland Metropolitan School District. So right now we welcome questions from everyone, City Club member guests uh, and those joining via our live stream at cityclub.org or radio broadcast at 89.7 IdeaStream Public Media. Also too, if you would like to text a question for our panelists up here, our speakers, please text it to 330-541-5794. Get a pen, that again is 330 <laughs> 541-5794, and the City Club staff here will be trying to work that into the program, so we appreciate them so much. All right, may we have our first question, please? First of all, congratulations, doctor. Is this on? Okay, congratulations on the report card, doctor, and the school board and the administrators and students. Uh, my question is, I know when we first had the Bionic uh, levy that the state of Ohio was kicking in. And that was one of the uh, incentives for us to go out first to get the voters to say yes to the levy, I mean, to the bond. Is it, we know the state of Ohio with, we know from a city standpoint, they're cutting, cutting local, but will they still, add, will they still match what we do as it relates to the bond from the state of Ohio if it passes? Yeah, um, that's a great question. We do have the work that we do with the bond accountability and our OFCC, and so um, I can get your, uh, I can follow up with the specific, uh, uh, to your specific question about the match, um, but I do know we still have that support with the bond accountability, the work that we do with the bond accountability, and the work that happens with getting, um, supporting our facilities and the work that is taking place. But I'll get that specific on the, on the match, uh, but the bond accountability is not going away in that commission, and also OFCC and the support we get from them is not going away. Hey, um, my name is Ramil. I attend Collarwood, and I would like to know what cuts um, did you make to the budget this school year? Yeah, most definitely. Thank you for that. What year are you? Um, 2024 through 2025. Yeah, 25, yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to celebrating class of 25 soon. Um, so the cuts we primarily made were at the central office. Um, when we, uh, we had the ARP ESSER dollars, our ESSER dollars that we got during the pandemic, which were dollars that uh, lasted for three years, and it allowed us to do some 
extraordinary things. It was a half a billion dollars that we nearly got, nearly a half a billion dollars that we got to do investments to help with the pandemic recovery. Those dollars end, um, so those dollars went away. So there were some programs that we had uh, due to uh, ESSER that we, we, we closed, but we primarily make cuts at central office. Uh, there were some tough decisions we had to make around uh, staff um, at the central office. There were some tough decisions we had to make around how um, some programmatic things would take place. There's some structures we had to put in place that hadn't been put in before, uh, such as how we spend things, uh, travel, uh, you know, uh, different things we uh, spend that we put in place, structures in place to monitor our spending moving forward. Um, but those were the cuts we made primarily. Um, at the school level, every school gets money. So your principal gets money to determine your school-based budget. Uh, those dollars remain flat. Um, but the primary, uh, the, the main way we get dollars at the school is based on how many students are in your school. Um, so when enrollment is low in school, funding is low in school. Uh, we do make a commitment at the central office for some of our really small schools uh, that we come alongside and support them. Um, but we're looking at our funding model as we move forward. But that's high level, you know, some of the cuts that we've made and decisions we're making moving forward. Great question. Uh, Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, congratulations, having taught in Cleveland 40 years. I just love hearing that wonderful news. So congratulations to you and to the students and the families and teachers and everybody. Um, this year, I think, will be one of the easiest uh, elections to get students involved in because of the very serious uh, contrast between the presidential candidates. Also in Ohio, the Ohio Supreme Court candidates are on the ballot, and we know that there are going to be issues that will eventually land in the Ohio Supreme Court, like um, abortion, uh, the gerrymandering, uh, the unconstitutional school voucher issue. So my question to you is, what is the plan to involve students in uh, the election? Um, it's, it's really, I know we have uh, Civics 2.0 in the Cleveland District. I don't know what kind of funding that's getting now, but it's been very effective in involving students in, in uh, elections. And I'm just wondering, what is the vision now to involve our students? I can uh, definitely start, and if there's, you can speak to, uh, to the levy part, okay. Uh, so in general, it's just some things we've been doing. Civics 2.0, yes, uh, we, uh, the Civics 2.0 is actually helping we, uh, register our seniors to vote. Um, we've also, through the open houses that we've had, we've been working with organizations such as the Divine Nine uh, that have been coming out to our schools and doing voter registration. Um, so we've been really working to get that. If I have any seniors in the house and you're, you, you're turning 18, making sure you have not done so to get registered to vote. But we've been working school by school and with some of our partner organizations uh, to support that effort as well. More specific to the levy election matter, and I trying to look out for Dr. Morgan because he, you know, due to state regulations, he can't really talk about this. But um, we have a separate committee, the uh, Citizens for Our Children's Future, who are um, an independent committee that is running the levy campaign. And students can only, we can't, we're not asking students in schools to do it, but anybody who wants to get involved in any kind of work around the levy, whether it's canvassing, phone baking, can go to voteforclevelandschools.org and get more information, but also sign up to get involved in that civic process this year. Oh, hi. <laughs> uh, somebody said everything is on the table. Nobody has talked about vouchers, though, being on the table. That is money that is siphoned off of the schools and given to mostly the Catholic Church. Uh, is that on the table, I guess is the first question. And given the Catholic, Church, the Catholic Church's history of raping children and covering it up, like is that not appropriate to be on the table to be withdrawn? Yeah, it's a good question. That's a little bit outside of what we have power over in the school district, but it is, you know, if that's something that voters or community members want to take a, a stronger look at and you know work on that's absolutely something that's available but it's not something that we actually have unfortunately any control over at the district level who has control the state legislature okay thank you i'm always so nervous on this side of the microphone <laughs> uh, my child is a student at a partner charter school in the near west side of cleveland and overall, it has been a wonderful experience for her. She is thriving, she's doing great, and she loves where she is. Um, as of this year, however, 
There are no structured after-school programs for offered. Um, and our family, and I'm sure almost all the other families at the school, are trying to figure out, and by trying I mean scrambling, to figure out how to get her most days at 3 p.m. At our school, teachers are stepping up to fill some of the void. I've heard other schools who are offering programs that parents have to pay to participate in. This is not a tenable situation. I imagine for the majority of Cleveland families. I am going to vote for the levy because as you mentioned, the alternative is worse and also because levies are important to support our students and our school and our city. Um, but how do I talk to families at our school in our school community about them voting for it when it feels like the district is not working for our working families? And how does passing this levy address the lack of these types of programs our families need to be able to thrive and for some to stay in the district and the city? Thank you for that question. Remind me, yeah. what, remind me of your name again. I'm Carrie Miller. Carrie, thanks for that question, Carrie. It was a great one. Um, a few things with that. One, our partner charters uh, that come alongside uh, uh, historically and continued in this uh, levy are part of the levy. So get the, the resources when those come in. Um, and also the, our partner charters, uh, though part of the district, also has um, you know, really autonomy for their, their structure and you know, different things that they could do for the pro program. So I can't speak specifically in terms of what's happening with the after school programming at your, your school, but I will talk broadly about after school programming because that was one of the things that uh, people may know. You know, last year with ESSER, we were able to partner with a lot of outside organizations because we had the ESSER uh, resources and dollars. Um, and CMSD, what we've done, we've been able to keep our district run after school program. So anyone that teachers are sponsoring, our athletic programs, um, yeah, I can always say we can always increase more. After schools are really important. I tell people all the time, even from my own post personal story, extracurriculars and after schools like saved my life and uh, got me to where I am today. And so that's an investment we want to make. Um, I would like to know, you know, uh, and this is not a question to you, but a question I would like to take on. Uh, just what our partner charters, how they are using it, what are their struggles, so we may can even follow up. We don't have direct autonomy in terms of some of those programmatic uh, work at our, uh, in our partner charters, um, but it's a great question and one that you know, we will want to think about you know, how, what supports are needed um, and what are, where are some of those gaps. So thank you for that. Hi, I'm Agatha Marshall, product of Cleveland Public Schools. Uh, we were the bomb. <laughs> I was honors. I uh, got a full scholarship to Carnegie Mellon University. I'm an alumni. Um, so what, we got to beg and plead pe for people to support the schools. I mean, I I'm not understanding. It sounds like we're in crisis mode or something. Are we or are we not? And uh, I don't understand it. And I was a teacher in the Clean Public School System, Warrensville and Shaw. Uh, What's, what's, it, what's, what's happening? What's really going on? <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, to start, public schools are funded by a variety of different formulas that involve the federal government, the state legislature, and not necessarily by what the district is deciding about, like, what dollars they have access to. So we have access to the dollars that we have access to. That said, like Dr. Morgan talked about, Public schools also, like we take, we take every student, right? We don't turn away a student. And in our schools, that means we are providing additional supports for our English language learners, our students with disabilities, um, and just looking to support families as they are, as they come in, as they enroll. We can't turn them away. And so we've got to do a lot with those dollars that are allocated to us by outside parties, right? Anything to add? Yeah, I, I would just say, I mean, you, your, uh, your question as I hear it also just sounds like a, a rallying cry for our community of just like the importance of continued support for uh, education. Um, and so I thank you for the question. Also, thank you for your service, not only as an uh, alum of CMSD, but also as a teacher. And just kid. to, I, sorry, I oh, appreciate okay. that question or that speaker as well, because like when we think about who is funded by these dollars, who the schools are serving, these are our neighbors, right? Yeah, like yeah. our neighbors are the children, are the alumni. It is us. It is not a separate group of like those kids are, are needing more money. It's our kids, it's our people, yeah. our community. And 
I was going to kind of elaborate off of what you just said, right? It's my mother, it's my mother-in-law, it's my, you know, my nephews, my brother. Uh, so um, having that bold conversation that you just, uh, in that bold talk, that you, how you, exactly how you put it, uh, we, sometimes we assume that uh, invest, investing is normal, right? That's actually an educational piece in itself. And it's kind of hard to uh, think about investing when there's hard times right now. But uh, we're in here collectively, right? And, and I know I spoke about the business community. Uh, I have a question about how um, funding is distributed to schools' athletics. Um, as a student athlete myself, I've seen um, certain things like, because uh, I'm playing football this year, right? <laughs> There is a lack of equipment, and you know, uh, nowadays a lot of sports require certain um, equipment uh, to be safe, but a lot of kids can't afford that safety and need the funding uh, for those type of things. So I was just asking, uh, how is the money distributed to uh, uh, schools? Oh, great, great question. And I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Kim Kimarion? Kimarion, yeah. Kimarion, and you're great in school? Uh, 11th. 11th school, you said? What school? Uh, Collinwood. You're a Collinwood. Okay, thanks. Thank you for, uh, for that question. Um, and I'll, I'll begin to uh, elaborate on it, but I also will put a pin on that because that's also a big part that we're going to be talking about at the, the state of the schools because that comes down to the student experience. And uh, we do have athletic programs in some of our CMSD schools, not all. Uh, we do have certain programs such as band and music at some CMS schools, CMSD schools, and not all. So when I talk about the future of CMSD, we talk about every school, every neighborhood, every scholar. We need to make sure that we have the programming, the resources, the, the, the quality that you can compete. Because I know you, it sounds like you said, hey, I want to make sure we're competitive on our football team so that we have those resources. And so um, it's definitely a need. Uh, we do have an athletic department and, um, and funds are distributed uh, across from those athletic schools. Uh, from from uh, the athletic departments, mainly based on enrollment of schools, uh, but it is an area we need to work on. And so well, I'll put a pin on that because we're going to be talking more about that at the State of the Schools. Thanks for that question, and good luck this season. <laughs> Hello, we have a text question. All right, Shakori, this one's for you. Okay. <laughs> when budgets are tight, often the trades are the first to see cuts in classrooms. Will the levy, if passed, help boost programs in manufacturing, mechanics, and other trades that are great options for students who may not be ready, can't afford, or want to go to college? And for Shakori, how will this help businesses like yours? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, so I can't answer how is what's going to happen uh, when budgets get tight. Uh, I mean, if I was in charge, uh, I think I would put trades over uh, College, uh, sorry. <laughs> right? Right? At least we'll, we'll, we'll be centrally it's located. College and career. <laughs> okay, and college and career, and. okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, but um, uh, I think that uh, our, uh, Mayor Bibb uh, definitely um, invested the ARPA dollars uh, correctly. Well, por a portion of that into the Cleveland Build system. I sit on the board of Cle Cleveland Builds, and we have a relationship with CMSD where um, there's a pipeline into getting to uh, the trades. And uh, real quick about the trades, gotta throw that out there. Uh, so in the first four years as a tradesman, you know, going through Cleveland Builds, the union tradesman, first four years, you make $200,000, 200. 200, that's everybody, no matter who you are, no matter how long you've been in there, right? Um, and also you get a two year associates program, a, a, a degree, um, or the credits that, um, that will prepare you for continue, continue education if you want to. So, uh, the trades is a very good option and through Cleveland builds and our relationship, uh, with the mayor's administration and, uh, Cleveland Metro school district. Um, and also, uh, even the investment in magnet, right? So we're making those investments, but. Uh, I can't tell uh, the CEO over here <laughs> on, you know, how to navigate those dollars. So, um, but it is, it's, it's working and uh, we're, we're working together. I mean, the only thing I will add to that point, yeah, we, we definitely have a philosophy in college and career. And so it is important that the, tr the, the trades are a, a big part of this. We hear often about trades programs that can come to the east side um, and accessibility for it. 
Um, the biggest thing that we want to work on is how do we create the academic programming, and I heard Chair Ellicott mention this, that creates opportunities for scholars and giving them the choice and not determining that, like the adults in this room saying, hey, you do this or you do that, or I'm gonna place this program in your school and this is what you're gonna do. We need to give them the options and um, give them the experiences so that they can choose. Uh, and I love even just what you just shared there, that was both college and career, because you said there's an opportunity there for the associate's degree. And so just how those partnerships can happen, and I know the, 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 uh, the mayor is really big on this in terms of what does that work-based learning look like while they're actually still in high school that leads to pathways. And so, um, yeah, definitely alignment there and uh, definite work that we want to continue to do. Um, this question is a little bit more for Sada and Shakori if you're interested and have an answer. Um, you know, a lot of my work, especially now, is around helping build civic and voter education within our communities, and especially because there is mistrust in the systems. And I think that could play a factor in other important issues like the levy and other issues outside of just the um, voting along the presidential house and all the other important uh, races that will be on our ballots. Um, but in the age of misinformation and disinformation, especially around a topic like this with school levies, how could somebody who is interested in learning more easily attain the information that was shared today that are not listening or watching or here today? And for those who are supporting issue one, how can they um, easily access the information to distribute it to their communities if they really would like to make sure that people are aware of you know, what exactly the levy is, what it will do, and what it won't do? It's um, voteforclevelandschools.org, um, issue 49. If you live in Cleveland, it will be the second to last issue on your ballot. And um, at the website, great question. You can get information. You can sign up for any number of different ways to get involved. You can reach out and ask questions. You can get a yard sign. People who know me know I love yard signs. Um, you can canvas. You can phone bank. Uh, and then there's ways you can also reach out for more information. We'll be sticking around after this forum. Um, our community is gonna be getting out most Saturdays over the next several months until the election. And you know, people will be at your door, ask questions. We're, we're here to talk. Hello, my name is Caroline Peake. I serve on the Bond Accountability Commission and I'm also a parent of two graduates from Cleveland Public Schools, Collinwood. And one of my sons has served 22 years in the U.S. Marines and is an officer now, uh, currently serving in Okinawa, Japan. So I like what I hear about uh, college and careers because there are several options for our students as they go through the, the halls of our, of our schools. And GE was a great partner with Collinwood High School at that time. And I'm hoping that we continue with some of those partnerships to alleviate some of the burden of educating our children. But my question today is, how does this levy will continue? Safety is an issue for many of us uh, in the community and parents. How will this levy continue to support the safety of our, of our children as they attend our schools? Oh, yes, thank you for that question. Um, safety is just so top of mind. Not only was it the number one piece of feedback that we heard on the Listen and Learn Tour that I did last year, which is why uh, when it comes to our strategic priorities, our, it's our first strategic priority in our strategic plan. Um, and then you hear about things that happened um, at the school in Georgia just a, a week or so ago. It, it hurts my heart. Um, and uh, you know when we think about safety in our schools, it's so important. Um, and there's a lot of resources that we put into our schools to keep them safe. Uh, we, uh, you know, we have metal detectors in all of our buildings. We have uh, our own police uh, department and security uh, school resource officers in our buildings that are keeping our buildings safe. And um, I'm so glad that those systems are working. Uh, but there's, you, if you talk to school leaders, they could talk about how over time, there are not as many resource officers that were, you know, in their building. Um, uh, or, or you know, times when we need extra support to schools for police officers. It's an area we need more supports on. And not only just on the reactive side, but I also get more information about student mental health and educator mental health and social emotional learning supports that we need. And so we've been grateful that um, we've been able to stand up the integrated health uh, committee uh, with its Cleveland Metropolitan School District. We have other uh, health care organizations that are in, uh, involved in that. I know Cleveland and Gunn Foundation, many of our partners here in uh, CTU, uh, led by Sherry Obrinsky, are a big part of that 
integrated health work that we're doing, making sure that kids have access to a, a nurse, but also has access to mental health uh, resources and supports. Those are all work that we were able to do even with the, the last levy to, to scan that up. And that's work we want to continue on. So this is a big part of the work we're gonna continue to do, making sure our schools are safe. And it is top of mind for us. It's our first strategic priority. Thank you, Shakori Davis, Sara Alakad, Dr. Warren Morgan, and Katie Houston for joining us at the City Club today. <laughs> that website that Chair Alakad mentioned before is again voteforclevelandschools.com. Voteforclevelandschools.com. Forums like this one are made possible thanks to generous support from individuals like you. You can learn more about how to become a guardian of free speech at cityclub.org. Please join me in welcoming students joining us from Collingwood High School and the Upward Bound Program, as well as guests at the tables hosted by the Bond Accountability Commission, Huntington, Minds Matter Cleveland, Say Yes Cleveland, and the City of Cleveland. Next Friday, September 20th at the City Club, Ohio Public Radio's uh, State House News Bureau Chief Karen Kassler will lead a conversation on the state of taxation in Ohio, notable trends in the nation, and what it means for our communities and economy. You can learn about this, you can learn more about this forum and others at cityclub.org. And that brings us to the end of today's forum. Thank you once again to Dr. Morgan, Sara, Shakori, and Katie, and to our members, friends of the City Club. I am Nigaman Sridhar, and this forum is now adjourned. For information on upcoming speakers or for podcasts of the City Club, go to cityclub.org. Production and distribution of City Club forums on IdeaStream Public Media are made possible by PNC and the United Black Fund of Greater Cleveland Incorporated.